Alright, so when it comes to the AMAX in Modern Warfare, I have mostly positive things to say, but I do have a handful of negative things I'm going to put at the end of this video. So, we're going to go through all of the cool stuff about the AMAX here first. So, starting off, is the AMAX a competitively viable weapon in Modern Warfare's current meta? And in my opinion, the answer is yes. Now, I saw Exclusive Ace say the gun fires at around 645 rounds per minute, but a lot of other people have said that in their testing it fires at 620 rounds per minute. Now, I don't know if that's an error on one person's end, or they just have different ways of testing, but I feel like 620 is the more accurate number. It might be somewhere in between around 630, 35. I don't know, but I feel like it's a little bit on the lower end compared to the higher end and the two numbers I keep seeing. This does fire faster than the AK though, it fires around 60 rounds per minute faster than the AK, and it fires around 20 to 30 rounds per minute faster than the SCAR. So, it does fire faster than the other two 7.62 ARs that we've already had. It is worth noting though that the AK's conversion kit fires at 690 rounds per minute, and after its recent buff it got, I guess not terribly recent anymore, but its last buff made that conversion kit very, very viable, so keep that in mind when comparing it to the AMAX. If you want a gun that's very comparable to the AMAX, but is lower recoil and is still able to three shot, I would definitely recommend the AK's conversion kit, even though it does take up an attachment slot and you are limited to 30 rounds, it's still a very, very, very viable weapon. But the AMAX, when it comes to close mid-range combat, when you're ready, it is almost unbeatable. This thing will three shot to almost every part of the body within about 20 meters based on the graphs and videos I've seen. And this definitely lines up with my experience. If an enemy is around mid range, mid to close range, not in close quarters combat and not across the map, but if they're in that nice sweet spot, this weapon absolutely shines. And when you put its longest barrel on, you can push that three shot kill out considerably from around 20 meters to up towards 30 plus. That's what I found with doing some very simple damage testing. This thing is a mid-range monster and is clearly competing directly with the AK-47. I was pretty disheartened to hear though when I found out that the AK and the AMAX both have the same inconsistency issue. The AMAX and the AK will do most of its damage when hitting the upper torso, which creates an inconsistency if you're off by a little bit. Luckily the faster fire rate of the AMAX allows you to correct a little bit easier but it does bother me because it does sort of dethrone the AK. Now the AK is still a very competent weapon, especially with its longer range attachments. You can really push the AK's three shot kill range out. It's fantastic. It's one of my favorite guns in the game, if not my favorite gun. But the AMAX frankly is just easier to use and more versatile. Now the weapon within its three shot kill range, which is around 20 to 30 meters, depending on your attachments, is capable of getting a two shot headshot, which is fantastic and it really, makes it so much better than the SCAR and AK in that respect because of its higher rate of fire, it just has this nasty little detail that it can't do that at every range. Here's the thing, the AK and SCAR at any range will be a two shot headshot. If you have ever gotten framed across the map by an AK or a SCAR, it's because even though those things have clunky rates of fire and they have a lot of recoil, if they hit two headshots, you're out of the game no matter what whereas the AMAX will eventually get to a point where it's just three shots at the head, and that's, let's face it, it's a lot less satisfying. So the AK and SCAR will still heavily reward you at longer ranges if you are accurate and consistent. The AMAX might not reward you as much, even though you are still able to put a lot of damage down range, even past its three shot kill range, its four shot with its rate of fire is nothing to laugh at. It's just that as soon as you start four-shotting somebody, you're better off using different weapons, and we'll talk about that more in a second. But let me just summarize my opinion on the AMAX's assault rifle form. The AMAX's assault rifle form is an amazing mid to close range beast. As soon as you get into tight quarter CQC, its rate of fire fails it. And at a distance, you're better off using the AK or the SCAR in my opinion, because it'll reward your headshots more. In fact, there are many guns I would recommend over the AMAX, but I think you want to have your engagements anywhere from 15 to 30 meters, depending on your attachments. Anything closer than 15 meters or further than 30, there's a lot of options enemies have to outgun you, in, in my opinion. 
so I recommend you go into a private match, earn a precision airstrike, and aim the goggles that you use to call in the precision airstrike around the map and look for ranges that are anywhere from 15 to 30. Get a feel for what that distance looks like and stick to it. The AMAX is way above average in those engagements, so you really want to stick to them if you want to use this weapon. Luckily though, the AMAX isn't a complete potato up closer at a distance, we're just talking about optimal engagements. But that actually brings me to my first loadout. This is the No Slouch loadout. This is Monolithic Suppressor, Merc Foregrip, 45 round magazine, GI Mini Reflex, and the CR56 XO Skeleton Stock, that's what it is, it's a Skeleton Stock. This setup makes you very, very versatile. You have a little bit bonus range, you have recoil control, you have hip fire accuracy, you have more than enough rounds to kill multiple people, you have a nice clear red dot, you can change that out if you like the gun's iron sights, I personally don't. And then you have a stock that helps with aim walking movement speed and your overall aim down sight speed, making the gun feel a bit snappier. This allows you to kick more ass in close quarters and it still allows you to take people out at range. The monolithic suppressor does increase your range by about 7% and also it removes a lot of your muzzle flash and it makes your vapor trails harder to see, so yeah, it's a really good option. This is both stealthy and versatile, and I think you should use it. This next one is stupid easy to use. This is also not that much different than the last one, but the key difference is that you use the Zodiac barrel to just optimize your recoil control, bullet velocity, and damage range. This will push your three-shot kill out to around 30 meters, and because of the added accuracy of this loadout, it really pays you to go for headshots. Now, you might be thinking this is too slow, but it's not about being fast. This one is about being a killing machine. This is optimizing our killing potential by sacrificing speed and mobility. Briefly though, this next one is for a mix between the two, damage and killing potential and speed. I had fun with this one for a bit, so if you wanna try it, go for it, it's on screen here. Now this weapon isn't just an assault rifle, it is also a DMR. With the M67 10R mags, you have 10 rounds of 7.62 M67 ammunition designed for increased muzzle velocity, improved accuracy, and superior damage. Weapon will default to semi-auto, but you do gain better aim down sight speed, better damage, better movement speed, faster bullet velocity, but unfortunately, you only have 10 rounds. This conversion kit is actually pretty damn good. It turns your weapon into a very slow, clunky, yet consistent killing DMR. It's better than the M4 SOCOM rounds, but unfortunately, as much as I would love to brag about these all day and give you my best class setups, well, I guess I'll still do that, but e even though I'd love to sing this thing's praises, it's really just not as good as the SKS or the EBR, in my opinion. If you're going to use a slow, clunky DMR, you might as well use the SKS or EBR. If you are going to use something in semi-auto, you might as well use the FAL or the FAMAS or the SCAR. And this sort of falls behind. Only having 10 rounds and that incredibly clunky rate of fire, it just doesn't work for it. But my loadout for its DMR form is very simple. Monolithic suppressor, right? Zodiac barrel, of course. But we have a commando foregrip, of course the conversion kit itself, a thermal hybrid, because I'm an asshole, and there you go. This is really fun in ground war. You can snipe people at a really good distance. Just get a couple of body shots or some headshots, and you should be good. But regardless of how much fun I've had with this, I can't recommend it to you because there are better guns for that type of playstyle. Guns that fire faster but do a little less damage, guns that do the same damage or more, but then they also have larger magazines and they're more built for this and you don't have to waste a conversion kit on it. I mean, if you have to have a DMR that already has an attachment slot taken up by the conversion kit itself, I mean, just look at this. You could use this DMR that has four attachment slots available, or... You could use this DMR that has four attachment slots available. I think you'll also notice it has more ammo. So the AMAX is a really above average AR when you play it to its strengths at the ranges it's good at, and it's sort of an overshadowed DMR that is still fun to use. Honestly, Infinity Ward, good job. But now we have to talk about the negative attributes of this weapon. So fade to black and white, let's talk about the thing you were all scared of me saying in this video. Because I have a 50% viewer retention, a lot of you won't see this, but here's the hard truth. This gun, though good, is still not better than an M4 or an MP5. In my opinion, it's not better than a Grau or a Kilo. If you are in 6v6 or 10v10 multiplayer, the AMAX, though being a very fun to use weapon, is simply not as versatile as some other weapons that can be chosen. 
it doesn't fire over 750 RPM. It does not have inherently low recoil, and therefore, it'll never be able to compete while the other weapons in this game that have such good DPS have such low recoil. I thought the AMAX was damn near overpowered on my live stream until I swapped over to my mediocre Task Force M4 with attachments on it that only hurt its bullet velocity and damage range. Either way, I switched to it and I just started doing better. Maybe it's just muscle memory, but I know it isn't. Unfortunately, I know it's because the M4 fires at 800 rounds per minute plus, whereas the AMAX is stuck around the 630 round per minute mark. It's awesome that it can get a three shot or a two shot headshot, and I don't want to discourage you from using it. Just when it comes to ease of use and overall versatility, nothing's beating the M4, the Kilo, the Ram, the Grau, and up close, nothing's beating the MP5. But when it comes to up close, that's the next gun we're gonna talk about. That is the Fennec, the Vector. And I look forward to talking about that because even though the Fennec is also not as good as an MP5, it is still very much so worth talking about. But even though this weapon might not be the most meta viable gun that they've added, it's still very, very good. It has a solid conversion kit, it's fun to use, it'll win you gunfights, it's not a bad piece of shit. It's not as versatile as other meta-dominating weapons, and it is not the best DMR you could be using, but it is still very fun nonetheless. So props to Infinity Ward, you added a very solid gun here. It's not overpowered, it's not meta-changing, but it is very, very good. So props to you, Infinity Ward. Let me know if I got anything wrong in this video. Let me know your favorite setups for the CR-56 AMAX Galil Ace-32 in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye.